said it's um, kept on reconnect. Hot, streamy, summer. Get it? Streamy? Get the joke? I get okay. it. Yeah, okay. I know. Okay. I was, okay. 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 I hope it's coming through. People are saying hello, so they must have heard me say hello, which is good. That's good. They Always adjust the mic before I start. But sometimes it's not loud enough, and sometimes it's too much noise. Can you see my big screen with nodes and stuff on it? Yes, I see it in the Twitch stream. Yay. Anyway, here I am again. I'm Mike effects most of the time. I've been working on materials. You probably know this by now. So I'm using my favorite. I've uh, really grown to like the program, Substance Designer. It's really fun to work with and it's interesting stuff. So, uh, kind of, I'm just going to wing it here like I always do. I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. But, um, <clears throat> so what I was working on last week was a material of stone cobbles that I wanted to put in our game. We have the version of it, which is like this, which is based on a photograph. This is now a cube material in our game, stone cobble 004. It's really exciting as you can see. Anyway, so my goal was to take this material here, which is based off of a photograph, and convert it into a fully procedural version. So what I did was Max is looking over my shoulder, checking everything. Get me the thumbs up, so that's good. Um <laughs> anyway, so it's going to convert this texture here into a procedural version. And I started it a little bit last week, and I've been fiddling with it this week, and I'll show you what I've gotten so far in a bit. But I just wanted to kind of continue with the basic problem we were having, and which is that <clears throat> this particular stone pattern is pretty random. It's got consistent number of stones down, eight down, but it's got usually one, two, three, four, five, six. This one wraps over here. It's usually got six across, but occasionally it has one which is five, where it's got an extra couple wide stones like this. So I was trying to fiddle around with um, methods using the tile generators that are built into Substance Designer to solve this problem. And what I did last week was kind of flailing around the original idea I had didn't really work very well. So here's the basic issue. If we use our straight tile generator like this, it's great for creating brick patterns. And it's got lots of settings. However, it doesn't really make making random stones very easy. 
um, <clears throat> you can randomize lots of the settings like the rotations and and the spacing between the bricks and all this good stuff. However, making stones of different sizes is a bit tricky. And what I was trying to do last week, which was the wrong way, was to just mix uh, two tile generators together, which had different counts, and then kind of blend them so that it looked like some were long and some were short. However, luckily for me, uh, Algorithmic already had a handy dandy tile random generator here, which is in their giant pile of nodes that they include. And this one will let me do some of the things I want. But not all. I will have to do one little trick at the end in order to get the results we're looking for. So the difference between tile and tile random is I'll look up this one. Just got a basic display over here showing some height. It doesn't look very pretty right now, but again I use the scale uh, a uh, height here like this and you can exaggerate it and this just helps you visualize <clears throat> the the 3dness of the stones even though they will be eventually compressed obviously down into pure textures um, right here you see on the edges of the stones that this weird artifacting, and that's just because I'm trying to do a height map which is showing a very steep slope, which is impossible. So it's it struggles trying to do these really shallow angles, but that's going to go away because all the stones that you make are always soft on the edges anyway, and that fixes that problem. But so back to the tile end. So I've got this set up the exact same way that my regular tile generator is set up to produce this running bond kind of look for from this like this. For our example here, what we wanted was we want six across and eight down most of the time. So six by eight. And what we want is we want the size to vary a little bit. So we can do that through random x and random y. So what that does is it will make the size of the largest stone, so if I said this is 0.5 for instance, that will make the smallest stone half the width of the largest, and it will randomly pick between those two sizes. So I can get a more interesting pattern, which looks more like my example. So, ta da, that is really easy. However, what I really want to do is I don't want the sizes of the smaller stones to be too different. I might want something like this. And then, here's where the trickier bit comes in. What I want is, I want occasionally there to be a row of stones which has a different count. So, for instance, if you look at this picture, which is a larger version of the same texture. This is our old one, which span four meters across and now since I'm only picking two meters at a time I'm only picking this corner, one of these corners to repeat. But but on this one you can see that there's the variance is a lot more obvious because you're seeing a lot more bricks counting down. So instead of eight down you can see sixteen whole rows of bricks. So you can see a lot more variance. Anyway. So what I can do is I can take this tile random and I can cut and paste it like so. 
and when I do that, it copies all of the settings from this, so I don't have to re-enter them until the very end. And in this case, what I want is I want the X amount to be, say, just 5. And what I want is I want the random value to be much closer to that 0.5, or it could even be more. As you can see, like right here, I get a nice really long one, and then the shortest one on this particular image is right about here. So that's actually less than half, but you know, uh, my goal isn't to exactly copy the image because that's very difficult. I could probably come up with something that's really close if I spent a whole lot of time on it, but you know, I, I can only spend so much time for material. And since I'm not really that good at this program yet, I'm a lot better than I was, but I'm not great at it. Um, I can only devote so much time on a particular material. <laughs> Just looking at the chat to make sure I'm not missing anything exciting. Alright, so anyway, so now I've got these two, and what I want is I want occasionally to get this row of five. Now, there are a couple ways I can do this. Um, one way would be to actually copy and paste the tile random generator again. And set the Y count. I will leave that at 8 and I will say X amount 1. And then it's got a setting here that's called random mask. And what that will do is it will randomly make some of them white and some of them black. The more I make it random like this, will get uh, fewer white stripes. So I could do that. And then when you pick the... Uh, like up here, for the global random seed for the whole thing. So whenever I regenerate this, it will regenerate a different pattern. I could do it that way. Use that as the mask. Like so. And you zoom in on this, you can see that yes, it does exactly that. If I look at this one, you can see that this row here is the wacky one. These are the ones that are closer together, and then when I combine them, I get a wacky row here, and then I get a wacky row on the bottom. Well, this one isn't quite as wacky. Anyway. So, I could do it that way. Uh, the way I ended up doing it, and I'm not sure if it really makes any difference, was I did this. is an, an isotropic noise. I can't remember exactly why I did it this way rather than the way I just described. I think it's because I decided I got better random results this way. But like it seemed like these two white stripes would end up bunching together more, which looked a little bit more strange. But it doesn't really matter. So what you can do is this where this creates noise in a streaky pattern, like this, and you can do X amount like this. 
basically this creates a bunch of these random strings like so. And if I set this down to eight, like this, I can get a random display of a gray. And then what I can do is I can process this through use my favorite Instagram scan. This one has been much loved by substance users. It's really a useful node. Uh, what this will do is it allows you to isolate. <coughs> Some of the grayscale range, and what you can do is you can crank this up. When I set it to 0.5, it gets the whole range. And then I can take this and I can crank the contrast way up like this, and that just blows it out so I get the black with my And by fiddling with the position, I can get more here. It's probably actually what the random mask does internally. Anyway, I just decided to do it this way instead of using the other tile generator. And save it. So now I've got this field of stones which looks closer to what we want here. Not the same, but close enough. Same way you can fiddle with the settings later. Um, now the other thing that these stones have is, well, for one, you can see that the edges are wavy, and so they're obviously been worn away, they've been stepped on, rained on, all of that. Um, plus, you can see that on a larger scale, some of the stones have you know, bits in their corners, either chipped off or worn away, like so. And there are like slight angles here. Sometimes they're more obviously double things here. And that will be pretty important to make our stones look more interesting. Right now, what we've got is we're using generic square pattern as the shape of the stones. And it's got lots of interesting built-in shapes. I've probably shown you these before, so I can make more pyramids. And they all have their various uses. So but what we're gonna use is we're gonna use pattern input. That allows us to use this input on the node, and we can put in whatever shape we want. Now, what we want in this case is we need something which is more irregular. So I would take a polygon one. So this. Hex patterns. So, but what we really want to do is make a more interesting stone pattern, and we want to make the scale a bit larger so the polygon clips off the edges. So, in this case, even though it is a hexagon, it clips on the edges and then we get these interesting looking corners. And then when that goes into the stone pattern like this, you can see that the stones themselves uh, get 
at exactly this shape. And we can make this more interesting by saying another polygon like this. And we can give it a different number of sides and scale. So, and we can blend the two together. This usually takes some fiddling and different results, but we can do it with it as a polygon. So, and when I do that, all the white areas will remain and the black areas will be put down. Since when you multiply the grayscale values together, uh, you have to remember that the grayscale is on a scale from 0 to 1. 0 is black, 1 is white, so obviously 0 times any number is going to be 0, so all the black values are going to remain. This a lackey number of sides here, and then we could do an organization but we can also rotate that machine by zooming back. See, this rotates the popping in, so I can scale it back from one. This. And so now we have. Beginnings of an interesting, a more interesting scene. Uh, what I can do in Tile Random is notice that, of course, they're all the same orientation. This thing. They're exactly copying this pattern in each brick. However, with the rotation and the station inside the generator. I mentioned last week these nodes are so complicated that I forget what things are. Ah, this one. So, if I do rotation random one, this, you can see that some of them are flipped around. And that makes it look a little bit more interesting. figure out what the symmetry random is because I think it tries to mirror some of them randomly as well. Crank that up. So we have this set of stones. And Again, and a look at the settings here. Get something different. That pattern. It's rotation random, symmetry random. And now we're getting something that looks a little better. So, making a little progress. Uh, 
Um, later on, I'll show you a better version of what I was working on. I just kind of want to do this now to show you the whole process of doing it. So, all right, we've got some bricks. They don't look very interesting. They're pretty blocky and regular. So one of the first things we can do is we want to make the stones have a little bit of teetering on them. So some of the bricks go one way. It's pretty subtle in our original picture of it. Like if there is any, it's hard to tell, but what you'll notice on a lot of these stone patterns is because in real life when you're stepping on the stones and applying pressure to them on different corners so they're actually not totally level obviously and it makes them a lot more interesting if some of them are kind of sticking in this mortar or background a little bit differently than others what we can do to achieve that Process and put some levels. I plug this directly into the image. hard to see because it's actually tilting the whole plane, so <laughs> it makes it difficult to visualize. Uh, by adjusting the levels like this, by default we're looking at the most severe 45 degree angle that goes straight from right to black. So if my scale here were set up really high, you would actually see this sort of panel tilt at 45 degrees and just trying to get the height back. So what we want is we want to make this more shallow. And you can take an individual brick like this and then use the old blend once more. What that does is that will apply this gradient across this stone. Now, that you can see that some of them are tilted. And by adjusting this value here, like I said, here's the original, so you can see that actually do tilt 45 degrees, well not, not 45 degrees because my scale is kind of off, but they tilt severely. So I do this, and by adjusting the lower value, I can make it so that it doesn't begin at black. And I can go back to because I've already got it rotating randomly, it rotates the <clears throat> I'm multiplying the gradient on top of the brick pattern before I get to the tile generator. So as the tile generator randomly rotates the bricks. That's why some of them are going this way and some of them are going this way. So do that. And I can do the same trick.
Alright. So now we have a bunch of really lumpy elevators. Something a little more reasonable. Still exaggerated, but closer to what the original image was. This will just help me see. Now, what we can do is move this a little bit, move this away. If I wanted to make these stones even more interesting, I could further process them with this polygon shape. And This thing I can do is I can turn the gradient on the side. And random sides. This and this. So, and now, here's my original brick. This, I could further multiply. It's going to look severe. As you can see now, I've got so many stones, which I can see over here. Again, they're randomized by the brick generator, so that they face in different ways. Um, what I'd probably do. Then adjust the levels. This will probably require a lot more tweaking. As always, when you're fiddling with the material like this, you have a choice of when in the pipeline, the pipeline being this whole process from left to right, going toward the finished nodes here, which can actually render what order you do things in. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, sometimes it's really just a matter of simplifying your whole graph, like you can combine a bunch of different operations together because you know that the math is going to work out the same. So you just do things in a particular order which makes your life easier because later on when I come back and look at this graph again I'm going to figure out what I did. <laughs> and it's easy now because I've been working on this for a week and I can remember what I did that week but if I have to revisit this graph a couple months later I'll have to study it what I did and the simpler and more orderly I can make it now, the easier it will be for future break. So anyway, so you can go with the levels like so. And 
this really just adds a little bit of extra. Doing this, I can clip off the top. I mean, what I'm doing is I'm setting this pipe point here so that this image is really blown out. It's very hard to see on a monitor, even on my monitor here, it's worse over Twitch, I'm sure. But to, uh, to see the gray levels, especially when they get close together, that's one of the reasons why I kind of exaggerate the scale, because it's hard to tell some of the gray values. And, um, seeing it as height in 3D makes it this and I can make the stones look more interesting. They become more like a facet at the end of it. Shape like this. They could do the same thing. Once again, copy and paste. A randomization of the rotation here, but it's inside of it. There is another mode called splatter, which is very handy. Just going to do that. I'm going to adjust these levels. Do the same thing. I'm going to clip off the top like this. Stone here comes the faceted version. Levels after Get a little bit confusing to look at after a while, so I'm going to increase that in my graph to make sure I've got everything copied. This version, these bricks, these bricks. Oh, 
One other thing right here. Now, there are ways I could do this. Again, it's a matter of order of operation, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a small blur on these. And this is soft enough. Streaking effect in this trying to do the angle, which is too steep. That's a tiny bit of slope on this edge. So. Alright, so now we'll quickly throw in some background here. In our original. This mortar or dirt, I can't tell whether this cobblestone is actually on the ground or whether so whether this is actual dirt and these are stones set in the ground or whether this is mortar it doesn't really matter. Something in between the stones. So we'll talk about that. And for now, do something very simple. Showing you a number of times. As I mentioned last week, uh, a substance designer is quite picky about whether things are totally grayscale or color in some nodes. Some nodes are smarter at figuring out what's what as you input them. So what you do. But a lot of times you'll get like a broken link, which means you have to convert it. And fortunately, it's really easy to do that. So what we do here is we're going to combine these two. This brick and we are going to use axe brick like this. And Max creates the effect of a union. It blends the two height fields together. So if you think of this height field as one that's at level 50, so it's creating a block of material which is just Plain smooth at level 50, and then the stones here actually go up all the way to 55. And then uh, interstices here, it's at zero right now, it's going to have to go up flat. So when I do a max mode, it combines the two. And that allows me to, by raising up the grade scale up here, This will provide the basis of a general height control on the like so. so last week we did a bit of fiddling. What we want to do is we want to first break up some of these edges. Uh, actually. I'll show you something. So, back to our reference, you'll notice that in the mortar area here, we've got a lot of little pebbles. 
very rough surface, but then you've got these little stones that are all kind of clustered up. And you want to do something the same thing with that. And so, what we can do is we can once again use our favorite tile jam. couple options for what we can do for the stones. I will do a really easy one at the end here. I will switch to parabola wood. And here is what the parabola wood looks like. So it is indeed a parabola. It's not an atmosphere, but it's close enough. Have a nice round D rock shape. So what we want is we want to create up some pebbles to go in this background area. Crank numbers up like so. And then we can make the scale a bit smaller. Scale creation, like so. And I'm quite offset so we can randomize. X and Y, and that will make the position random. So this. One thing you'll notice at the moment is that as it's blending the two dots together, the various dots, it's using the add mode, so it becomes very bright. What we want to do is we can switch this back to max, which is what I demonstrated before. So we can squeeze in, and that combines the two. So that when two stones or two little dots touch each other, it's more like they're merged rather than an adding, which we've created with the idea. So I've got a lot of dots, so we can crank these numbers up higher like so. For our simple case, what we can do is make this is a little bit more raw. Show you. This half and down, half and down, the same. This is the beginning, so we're going to stop this one. Now, these circular dots are pretty dull, and they would be fine for like river stones or something. I'll probably do is I would randomize their shape a bit. And I can do that by adjusting this interstice number. So it treats these as if they are individual bricks. And so Make them random with a little finger. X and Y, like so. Make them more irregularly shaped. And then, this is still pretty subtle. I can do pre rotation like this, pre rotation random. And that will make them all rotated. Various angles. Like so. Since I want this gray value here to be kind of a global control, uh, by just blending them like this, it's a little limiting because this image is totally black to white. And when I blend it in here, it's going to tend to make this gray, if I just use a straight copy mode, which 
this out. Call this image, call this image, like so. It's going to be really dependent on this black color here because it's going to have a high ID. So what I can do is I can then use levels again. Levels or his command scan. Create a separate kind of levels easiest. Just do this. And we can make this a smaller dynamic range than we can with. So and then that dulls down the effect of the rocks. thing we could do is we could also use a method which is similar to what we did over here to create shapes. Now, at the moment, this doesn't look very good because it's using this clipped square. And once again, we can click on levels to adjust this. There are various ways to fix that problem. This is almost a lot of levels. If we darken this down, we can remove some of those edges and just leave some of the irregular shape. Admittedly, these are pretty small, so it's going to be hard to tell. But, uh, stuff that seems pretty subtle in the texture actually does bleed in the end, so it usually works out. Level setting. So, we want to randomize this different. And so we've got this bunch of little rocks. Roundy rocks here. So we have to go these things. The easier way to do it is to multiply these two together. So they're both black to white, and that will work pretty well. Could add them as well, or I can go to the numbers max, that max because that'll merge them. And then apply the numbers afterwards. Scaling it on this end, you can see that you can kind of flatten out the stones. Now, this doesn't look that great yet, but it'll get there. Especially when we uh, put in another dirt in the background behind it, which will make this gray. Substance Designer comes with a handy dandy set of primitives for doing dirt. Dirt 1 through dirt 6. And they provide a nice 
lots of interesting this kind of spectral patterns like this. And then what you can do is you can combine them in interesting ways. Oops. It's also got a really nice one. It's like black and white spots. Which creates another interesting pattern like that. So there's one that's really useful called moisture noise, which we use a lot. Favorite max to begin with. This one is kind of overpowering, this one. But what I would really do is just copy. So, anyway, this is an ideal thing. Process. Some levels even them out. Blending all this way. Just like this. Show up. And then we will take this result here and bring it in with the gray, which will be then copy mode that will kind of provide a master level. So if I raise up this gray here, you can see I can push up the gray. So and I'm running into lunch. But much like a cooking show, Show you one I've already done in the oven. Which is one I was working on, which has a lot more fancy stuff, but uses a lot of the same principles I was talking about. So, this is what I was doing earlier this week. And it looks quite a bit more like this ish. Okay. Right. And I was struggling with doing the color this week on this, which is turning out to be a lot trickier than I thought. Maybe I'll have something to show you next time. Um, Although I'm beginning to work on effects again a bit because we're getting our building system working on our companion specs test. So that's it for this week. I hope to have something exciting to show you next week if I stream again. And thank you for watching and listening. Max has reminded me to show you the intro before I log out. So there it is. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Hot. See you all next week. Summer. Get it? Streamy? Get the joke? I get it. Okay. Yeah, okay. I know. Okay. I was, okay. okay.